Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode 21 of Photoshop for Photographers. Recently, I did a Lightroom Quick Tips video, episode 68, where I showed how to deal with an image that was underexposed. Well, naturally, people ask me, well, how do you deal with an image that is overexposed? Well, you could do those same things I did in that video, except instead of working with shadows and blacks, you would work with highlights and whites and so on. But it has been my experience that Lightroom doesn't deal with images that are overexposed quite as well as it might deal with an image that is underexposed. So I would use Photoshop for that. So we're going to do this image here. and We're going to try to rescue this sky, which as you can see is, is really blown out. Now, there's a lot of things you have to take into account for in Lightroom before you send the image over into Photoshop. Because, especially if you shoot raw like me, and hopefully you do, if you shoot, don't shoot raw, you won't have as much data in here. Your JPEG image just won't have as much um, information in those highlights. So you won't be able to rescue the sky as easily as it might look like I'm going to be rescuing the sky in this image. So number one you hopefully are shooting raw number two try to rescue as much as possible in lightroom because when you send it over to photoshop lightroom's going to create a tiff file to send over to photoshop and the tiff file then does lose a little bit too so a little bit of that data so we want to try to get as much here as possible so we're going to go to the basic panel and we're just going to bring the highlight slider down we're going to bring the black slider down and then we'll open up the shadows so we could see the statue of david i mean we'll open up blacks a little bit too if you want to add any little clarity or if you want to add vibrance and stuff it doesn't hurt to do that here you could do that also in this image it doesn't really add much to the effect so we did that now the other thing i would strongly recommend you do is do lens corrections here and make sure that if you have any chromatic aberration that you get rid of it here now i am going to do a lightroom quick tips video on chromatic aberration and how to get rid of it in an image so i'm not going to get into that too deep here but if your image does have chromatic aberration in it when you do this over in photoshop trying to rescue those highlights it could really make that chromatic aberration look much worse. Now in this image, it has a whole different problem. I'm not really, I don't really remember why I did this, but this image is old, like very old. And I had just got this 18 to 200 millimeter lens and I had just got a camera back then. It was a D7000, Nikon D7000. It just came out and I just bought one. And for some reason, I shot this at F18. F18, now, those of you that are really into photography, you know that that is stopped down way too much. That will cause your lens to create diffraction on the image and really softens the image. And if you zoom in here and you look along the shoulder of David, he's in good focus, but you can see how that edge is really blurry. And that's not going to look very good when, we, um, when we're all said and done. So... This image will work, or this process that I'm going to show you will work best if your image is, is beside that, you know, sky being blown out, is otherwise uh, shot properly, meaning this is more at an f-stop of like f8, somewhere in the sweet spot of the lens, so you're not uh, crippling the image with uh, any lens diffraction, and your chromatic aberration is at a minimum. All right, so... We did what we could do with the this images now. So we're going to send it over into Photoshop. So I'm just going to right click on the image. We're going to go down to edit in. I'm going to go down to edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. That will take the image. Now, as I mentioned, it creates a TIFF file. It does it in the background. You really can't see it do it. And it should open it up in Photoshop. I'm not sure. There it is. And there it is in Photoshop right there. So. There's all different ways you could do this. And to tell you the truth, I might use one way on one image and then another image it might work better a different way. So I'm going to show you one way, probably the, I don't know. It's, I don't know if this is a common way to do it or not, but this is the way I would tackle it on this image. This image is relatively easy because we really have 
two elements. We have David and we have the background. We don't have any like tree branches coming in, which would complicate things and make things much more difficult. In this case, we just have David and the sky. So we're going to make a selection of the sky. So we're going to uh, hit W on our keyboard for the quick selection tool. And we're just going to do a quick selection of David. Now, in this case, because there is such great contrast between the statue and the sky, uh, there's really, I mean, it, it was easy. The selection was very easy. There's not much really more to refine or to make better or to do anything like that. So this selection really is good enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Command J on my keyboard. That's because I have a Mac. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J. And when you do that, if you look over here at the layer, what you actually duplicated was just the part of the image that was selected. So we just actually copied the sky. So we have a, uh, a layer that is just the sky on top of the actual image itself. Now what we're going to do is we're on this layer one and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. And you can see right away it made the sky more pronounced. Now, you could do that again. You could hit Command-J several times, and it will keep making the sky darker. Um, and it automatically will show the multiply blend mode. And if you want to do that a couple times, you could too. So that brings it out a little more. Now, other thing now, we could just kind of add some, some pizzazz to the image here. Let's say that um, I want to bring out a little more of the blue in the sky. So I'm going to go to here where it says Selective Color. And again, uh, I mention this all the time. In the, I'm in the Photography Workspace. So if your uh, Photoshop does not look like it's laid out like mine, your workspace doesn't look like this, go up to Window, Workspace, and click on Photography. So you're in the Photography Workspace. And then your Photoshop should look, out, look like it's mine. All right, so we have this selective color. What we want to do is right here where it says colors, we want to change that to neutrals. All right. Now we have uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the yellow slider. If I move the slider to the right, I'm adding yellow. If I move the yellow slider to the left, I'm taking yellow away. And what you're actually be doing is you're going to enhance the complementary color to yellow. And those of you that are familiar with complementary colors, the complement of yellow is blue. So when I move this slider left, you can see how we're adding some blue to the sky. Now this black slider, I'm going to move that to the right, and that's just going to enhance the shadow parts of it. Now as I did that, you might have noticed that David changed tone also. I really just want to affect the sky. I don't want to affect anything else. So I'm going to click right here. This is the clipping layer icon. So we're actually going to clip this just to the sky so that it's only affecting the sky and not David. So then when we come in, you can see it's just affecting the sky. So we're going to try to enhance those blues a little, enhance the blacks a little like that. And that's good for now. We could come back and readjust that later if we um, feel that we need to. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is let's um, let's do an exposure. Um, there's so many things here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why don't we go to exposure and I'm going to clip this too so it only affects the sky. And let's bring that exposure down just a touch. No, that doesn't do anything. Let's go to gamma correction. We'll move that to the right. That'll give us a little more contrast in the sky. So we move that to the right. So now we have that. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want probably these white parts of the sky just to be a little brighter. So I am going to get a levels adjustment. Again, I'm going to clip that so I'm only affecting the sky. And I'm going to move that to the left. You can see how it brightens up those brighter parts of the sky, which kind of helps match the highlighting that is on David himself. And that's that. So we have all these different layers. And to kind of um, uh, repeat what we did, we started out with this. This was the layer we brought over from 
Lightroom. We did a selection of the background using the quick selection tool. That's W on your keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut to get the quick selection tool. There's two two tools, two tools on or in this little cubby hole. One is magic wand and one is quick selection tool. We use the clicks quick selection tool. Then we duplicated that by hitting Command J on my Mac. It's Control J if you have a PC. And we changed the blend mode of that that layer to multiply. Then I hit Command J again to darken it even more and that automatically had the multiply blend mode. Next we did a selective color adjustment layer and in that selective color adjustment layer I brought the yellow slider down and the black slider up and I clipped it to the layer below it so it only affected the sky. The next we did an exposure adjustment layer and in that we just turned the gamma correction up a little bit just to add a little more contrast to the sky and then finally we did a levels adjustment layer and with that I just brought this slider at this far right of the histogram towards the left which helped make the whites a little whiter and brought you know made the sky look a little better in my opinion so that is it now I mentioned that this lens had a lot of diffraction and chromatic aberration probably was a little bit of a problem too and if I zoom in you could see where that diffraction is an issue right here um, you could see this that's all because of that diffraction uh, because I shot at f18. So it's really best um, to try to shoot in your lens's sweet spot, so to speak, I call it. And if you need, if you're not familiar with lens diffraction and what it can do, that how destructive it can be to your um, resolution of your images, Steve Perry, look him up he's a photographer and he has um, you even go to my website and if you look for him just search in the search bar on my website for Steve Perry I have one of his videos on my website where he explains lens diffraction diffraction better than anyone I've ever seen try to explain it so that in a sense is done now it's not very good because I mentioned we have this like ring around him in certain spots like his shoulder here you can see up here in his hair and that's because of that lens diffraction and again um, we're gonna do a Lightroom quick tips video on chromatic aberration and uh, look for that in, an, in a day or so I'll do that video so we're gonna save this now so I'm just gonna the way I do it is with my Mac I hit command s to save it um, you could hit Control S with a PC and that will save it. You could see the status bar down here is showing when it, how it's saved. And it's at 98%. Now it's done. Now we could hit Command Q. That's to quit. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think with uh, Windows uh, PC, I don't think Control Q will quit. Um, you could just go up to the uh, you know, normal way you quit a file, the X in the corner to quit or quit up uh, an application so there's our original image and there's our image where we rescued the sky in Photoshop so I hope that helps again there's all different ways you could do this um, and this is just one and this was admittedly an easy one because there weren't a lot of branches or anything coming in but if you have a relatively uh, blown out sky and it doesn't have a lot of busyness along the bottom let's say where uh, tree branches are coming in this uh, method should work actually very well so that's it for episode 21 of Photoshop for photographers I'd like to thank you all who watch my videos thank you very much and a special thank you to all those who support what I do by buying my Lightroom presets my Photoshop actions and making donations it's because of you that I'm able to do these free videos thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.